a lot of people, especially the influencer type, it's all about look at me and look at all the wonderful things I'm doing. But the people who do open up and are transparent and tell you about their struggles, it's just so more real and so much more authentic. And, mm. you know, everyone's got a great story to tell. Even people who seem quite plain on the outside always have amazing things to tell you. And the ones where people overcome great hardship or, you know, go from the underdogs to the champions, they're always the best stories. And you know, a lot of the great interviews that we've done are people who are successful. And often, you know, the peaks of success come from the troughs of failure. Hi, listeners, it's Tim here. And today's episode is with the wonderful Michael Gumley, our head of guitar. And we're talking all about the Top Music Guitar Podcast. It's a short episode. We're going to have a little bit of a sneak peek into some of the guests and topics that Michael has been discussing. And I hope you've been able to tune into those and or share them with other teachers who you know who are interested in guitar teaching. Now, just before we dive into today's episode, I did want to let you know as well in regard to classical repertoire and technique and performance that I have a number of resources for any AMUS A candidates over here in Australia. If you're going for your performance diploma with any of the exam boards, um, but particularly the AMEB, You will need to know a lot of information about the pieces that you're playing and the periods of history that they're all related to and from. And so, I've collected a bundle of resources that I used in order to get a distinction on my own diploma about a number of these periods and specifically about a number of pieces that may be ones that you or your students are working on. So, if you're interested in those, just head over to our marketplace. It's at topmusicmarketplace.com and search for Diploma or AMUS A resources. You'll be able to download them either as single items or as a complete bundle. It's an absolute bargain. It's going to save you an absolute ton of time doing the research yourself. And I include in that bundle example questions that the examiners may ask you on a number of pieces and about a number of eras of musical history. So go and check that out, topmusicmarketplace.com, or you can search for me over there as a seller. All right, let's get on with the show. Michael Gumley, you've met before on the podcast. He's a guitar teacher and music educator here from Melbourne, Australia, and he's our head of guitar at Top Music. He also owns the Melbourne Guitar Academy and rocked his start at guitar playing at age 15 and was instantly hooked. He's actually quite a late beginner. Michael brings his passion for and love of all things guitar to each and every lesson and loves sharing this with other teachers around the world, particularly about the business journey that he's been on and how every guitar teacher can really thrive in running their business. So, welcome back to the show, Michael Gumley. Michael Gumley, welcome back to the show. Great to be chatting with you again. It's fantastic to be heard, Tim. Thanks for having me on. Well, you're the host of our newest Top Music show. It is the Top Music Guitar Podcast, and we were so stoked to finally be able to get it live this year. And um, so I thought, why don't we have a quick chat about it and let people know because there's going to be lots of people listening who maybe teach some guitar on the side. And if they don't, they maybe know someone who does. And so we want to really spread the word about these incredible interviews that you've been conducting. So firstly, tell us, what's the show all about and who's it for? Well, the show's all about guitar teaching, dynamic music teaching, creative music teaching, and you know a little bit of business stuff thrown in there as well. But basically, I'm just trying to find awesome guitar teachers doing awesome things in the musical education space, and then try and share the knowledge they have, you know, from the people who have the knowledge to the people that need the knowledge. So we can try and help you guys out with your own teaching, your own businesses, and everything in between. And for those of you who haven't met Michael before, Michael's our head of guitar at Top Music and uh, a, an incredibly talented and skilled guitar teacher. He also owns a huge guitar studio here, uh, school in, in Melbourne, and has a great experience both in that creative pedagogy side of things, but also running very, very successful businesses. And so they're the two kind of key areas that teachers are going to learn all about. Uh, you've already interviewed a number of fabulous guests. So tell us about what, what are some of the favorite bits that you can remember or the people that you've interviewed so far? Yeah, there's just so many wonderful things and I'm having the absolute time of my life interviewing <laughs> people at the moment. Like I'm so it's jealous so there are 280 or so episodes in there, Tim, <laughs> because it's just absolutely fantastic. And you learn so much um, more about people and what they do just by answer, uh, asking the right questions. So, you know, episode one with Daryl Powers, he's a great friend of mine um, who's really big on, you know, learning psychology and optimizing a learning process and things like that. And he's just a wealth 
of knowledge in terms of, you know, deep practice and how to not just do it for yourself, because a lot of people, you know, seek high performance practice, but he's someone I know who's done it with his students and made that, you know, part of the day to day to the point where, you know, people don't even realize they're doing it. He's just subconsciously put it into his process. And that's absolutely amazing. Um, episode number two, which is out with Mike Grande, sorry, Mike Grande has, you know, often attributed to the Disney world of, you know, guitar studios or music studios. He's absolutely fantastic. And he's someone again, who's, you know, been in the game for 20 years, 30 years, and he's just as excited, you know, 10 years into it or 30 years into it as most people are in day number one. So he's just a wealth of knowledge and episode number three coming up. Um, you know, we've got Lauren Bateman, um, uh, someone else who's, you know, making waves in the online teaching community, doing really, really well on a YouTube channel. So part of what I'm trying to do, you know, there's so many options. Do you have a brick and mortar business? Do you go online and everything in between? So I'm just trying to find experts who are winning in every field that they go into. And so we can give you an insight into what they're doing what's led to their success, their thought process, the actions that they take to try and, you know, get to these kind of things. And, you know, I've even interviewed some of my old teachers or some of the, um, you know, great teachers around the city of Melbourne in various fields just to say, hey, how do you help, um, you know, someone who's gotten a really great track record of getting people into university? What kind of things should teachers who want to get their students into music college or tertiary education do? What kind of uh, things should someone try and help their students get through, you know, secondary school, high school exams? try and do. So, you know, we're just trying to think about, you know, what are all the components that make up guitar teaching? Some of the things which, you know, don't get covered by specific courses or might, um, might, might seem like they're regional specific or age specific, but can be more broadly applied to a ton of different areas. So, you know, these are all the wonderful things that we're looking forward to. Mm. Cause it's great to get the inspiration of someone who's been there and done it. Mike Grande, uh, all our listeners, current listeners will, will recognize his name. Of course, he created Rock Out Loud Live, the video platform. And that was on top of running two huge studios. Like, and, and these studios in New York, uh, I don't know if you've seen footage of them, Michael, but they are like, there's recording studios in them. They look like, I don't know, S- SpaceX or something like these buildings are amazing. But the great thing is that he's, so happy to give back to the community. There's lots of community outreach. He also sells products on the site and he he really is so happy to tell people about it. So I think this is the great, one of your great skills, Michael, is being able to take uh, someone like Lauren Bateman who has, yeah, huge YouTube success and be able to pull out what is actually important in that and how can someone start replicating that from the start? Because it's all very well seeing these people with grand studios and million dollar this or that, but how do you actually... Uh, formulate that in your own business. That's the kind of nitty gritty that you want to try and get out, right? 100%. It's, um, you know, extracting a process that they followed. And even before that, what was the inspiration? Mm. What was, you know, the motivating factor? What got them to actually, you know, go through and put it together? What processes did they come up with? What hurdles did they face? And, you know, we're all on a journey um, and we're all going to some destination. Some of us are lacking foresight into what that destination is. Some of us are lacking a process to get there. Some of us have gotten close or even attained it and, you know, are looking for the next thing. So reaching up to some of these guys doing really wonderful things can just show you what's possible and also show you that, hey, if they can do it, so can you. And by getting an insight into their thought process and how they went about it, you don't necessarily have to go in the same direction, but, or, you know, go for the same outcome, but it can at least give you a trajectory to follow and, you know, save you lots of time and frustration and anger in, pro- in the pro- process. And, you know, having someone like Lauren, who is so open to talking and so helpful just to say, hey, yeah, this is what I wanted to do. And this is how I went about it. That can save you years of time. And, you know, obviously it's not going to be as helpful as, you know, spending a week with or, or getting some mentoring from her directly. And I do believe she does stuff like that, but at least we can get a great insight, you know, in a short snippet. And, um, one of the things that we do is have sort of a longer form podcast. We go for about an hour, sometimes a little bit more, where we're not in a rush to get through, you know, five questions as quick as we can or meet a 30 minute deadline. We're having great conversations. We're trying to touch on their areas of expertise, talk about the stuff that they're passionate about. And then that's obviously going to uncover some really valuable gold and some great information. I'm just going to keep on tapping into that and go as deep as we need to until the conversations run its course. And then we dive into the next awesome topic that they're, they're ready to talk about. So pretty much most of the people that I interview, you know, they are very successful um, and we're not narrowing it down. So anyone listening, if you're doing awesome things in the teaching space, whether it's not necessarily guitar related, but it could be helpful from another music teacher's perspective. Um, I spoke to another, like an, a social media expert to get some tips on how um, guitar teachers can start dominating their social media. So there's stuff like that that we can use in our business. 
I'm um, also I, the most recent one I did was with someone who ran a, a very um, popular online guitar magazine in the 2010s and basically, you know, interviewed all these A-list, B-list kind of, you know, rock guitar players from around the world and just being able to hear what he found out directly, you know, speaking to people like Sean Lane or Gary Moore, he interviewed guys like that who are no longer with us. So, you know, hearing his insights of how he networks to make a magazine could be really, really powerful for how you can network with, you know, other teachers or other YouTubers if you're putting together an online community or something like that. So, you know, it's it can be very broad at times. It's not just for guitar teachers, but if you like guitar, you're thinking about teaching guitar or you teach guitar or, again, know someone who teaches guitar, there's going to be something here for you. And even if you're just a business person, you're not necessarily in the music studio business or teaching business, there's still going to be a wealth of knowledge here for you as well. I love that you mentioned the the students or, you know, even late teenagers just in their early 20s, maybe they play some guitar on the side and they're thinking in their head, oh, maybe I could be a guitar teacher. If you're covering elements that they're going to be able to grow from, but also those teachers who maybe are in a school perhaps have been been teaching a couple of days a week in a school and want to maybe migrate to their own home studio, right up to those people who are already running multi-teacher studios. Uh, there's... That's the great thing about your experience. You've been every one of those people along the way. And so you can pull out the stories which will suit uh, teachers at any level or even, as we say, those students right at the start. I just want to bring up um, Lauren Bateman because she's, uh, she's, she's an incredible human. I um, really love Lauren. And one of the reasons I really respect her is that she doesn't only tell the good stuff. She's really happy to share her struggles and um, get quite, quite deep and, and open about the challenges she's faced. Um, and she, she does that quite regularly on Facebook, on, on her posts. I'm not sure if you've seen those, Michael. Don't know how deep she she went in your interview, but I really value people that aren't all about the beautiful Instagram pictures and smiling faces, but who actually say, you know, yeah, this, there's challenges here uh, and we're going to work through them. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, the downfall of modern social media at the moment is people only really show you what they want you to see. And a lot of people especially the influencer type, it's all about, look at me and look at all the wonderful things I'm doing. But the people who do open up and are transparent and tell you about their struggles, it's just so more real and so much more authentic. And, mm. you know, everyone's got a great story to tell. Even people who seem quite plain on the outside always have amazing things to tell you. And the ones where people overcome great hardship or, you know, go from the underdogs to the champions, they're always the best stories. And, you know, a lot of the great interviews that we've done are people who are successful. And often, you know, the peaks of success come from the troughs of failure and mm. there's lots of questions that i i do to sort of you know extract that information what hurdles did you face um what, what was you know the biggest challenge that you faced in your business or or life up until this point and what did you do to overcome it so even if you know people listening are feeling a bit apprehensive about the whole thing or doubtful of success you know the people that we interview have all overcome you know great great failures or great hurdles in their life to get where they are and you can too yeah, I remember Mike Grande is just one example. Bought his studio, one of his studio, his second studio in New York, just before March 2020, and had spent an absolute t six figures worth of on this. And I'm not saying anything that uh, isn't public. He's he's talked about it on my show before, and just the story of how he got through the pandemic and how he's been able to pivot and adjust, and now he's selling. Uh, what does he call them? Cord cards. Cord cards? Yeah. Like, um, yeah, what a, what a great inspiration. I'm so glad you were able to get him on the show. So I think at the time that this particular episode goes live, I reckon there's going to be about four to six episodes live. Uh, so that's a good four to six hours minimum of incredible content for all the guitar teachers out there in the world. So go and check it out. Um, Michael, who, who's coming? Have you got a, anybody in the works that you want to share or are we keeping it all secret? Oh, I definitely don't want to keep it all secret. In fact, you know, we want to get people as excited as possible as we can about this show. We even want to take, you know, recommendations from mm. um, your listeners who may, you know, be guitar players and want to come across or, again, anyone who's been really helpful on the uh, the top cast uh, up until this point to jump across to the, the top music guitar podcasts as well. But, yeah, who have I got coming out? Uh, I guess uh, the third episode is going live later this week. So, yeah, probably four to five episodes before this one comes out. But, yeah, I think uh, we're about to organize something with Frank Gambali, who, you know, is an absolute world-class guitar player and musical educator and probably someone who, you know, was the first real success story for an Australian guitar player becoming an educator. You know, he went back in the, um, back in the 80s. He 
hopped on a plane, bought a one-way ticket to Los Angeles to join Guitar Musicians Institute, GIT back in the day as it was. And, um, you know, he did one year there and in the second year they made him the teacher because he was that damn good at guitar and he's just had a huge output of um you know books dvds educational resources of the last 30 years so you know not only is a great australian guitarist and you know probably it's a great disservice that not so many people he never makes the list here because he's been a very academic kind of person in the, in the jazz field so he doesn't get the recognition he deserves but very keen to be having him coming on in the future um i'm just trying to tee up as you know many awesome uh, things as we can. Uh, a, a few kind of people in the network that Lauren Bateman and, and I came from and Daryl Powers, a few old friends from that network are jumping on and talking about, you know, what they've done to build six figure businesses and, you know, multi six figure studios and go and hire teachers. And again, all the wonderful things that they're doing. Uh, and I think there's a sort a certain thing that happens with, you know, music teachers is at least from my perspective, if you build a business to a certain point, um, money might be one of the first objectives, but once you have the money there and once you have the student base, that's when you can really focus on getting creative and doing, you know, really, really wonderful things. So the fact that we get to not make a value judgment on people, but say people with these larger studios who have the resources behind them to get really creative or to do wonderful things or have huge showcases or simply the fact if they've got 10 locations, they've got a huge pool of students to draw from, um, they can start doing these really, really exciting things uh, that most people can't when they're just starting out. So that's the awesome stuff that we're really looking forward to sharing with you. All right. Well, where do people go to find you, Michael? Well, the the... Top Music Guitar Podcast can be found on the Apple Podcast, uh, Spotify. I think, Tim, you might be more qualified to yes. ask this question for me. You should be able to just search for it. Wherever you listen to the Topcast, wherever you're listening to this show, just hit that search button, search for Top Music Guitar, uh, Michael Gumley, uh, any, any of those things, and you'll be able to find the show. Hit subscribe. Make sure you tune in and check it out. Uh, and if you've got any questions as well, you can head over to our main website, topmusic.co and flick the switch over to guitar and you'll be able to find all the show notes, uh, links and details to Michael's new show. It's so exciting, Michael. I'm really glad we've been able to uh, kick things off with some really amazing guests. So really encourage all our teachers. Um, and even if you are mainly a piano teacher, you will still learn so much from listening to a different host, interviewing different people also about music teaching. So I really do commend it to everyone who's listening to this show. Michael, thanks for joining us today. And uh, people, go and have a, have a listen over on the Top Music Guitar podcast. Thanks, Michael. If you want to be on the podcast, if you know someone who should be on the podcast or you've got recommendations for interviews, just shoot me an email, michael at topmusic.co or hit me up on social media and say, hey, these are the wonderful things I'm doing. Share it with the world. Or, you know, hey, this person, I'd always love to get in their brain and pick it apart and understand deeper what they're doing. And we'd love to get them on. And we even like to share back with the community. You know, one of the awesome things about Top Music is that it is a community. And even if you just start out, you've probably got an interesting story to tell and something awesome to share. So, you know, we've got a spot for you on the podcast. We've got quite a number of guests lined up, but we're always looking for more. So if you feel like you've got something to contribute, even if, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be an hour-long conversation, even if it's just a 15-minute chat about all the awesome things that you're doing and a great idea you've got, we'd love to help you get that out to the world and, you know, help us with our goal of making music teaching better and giving all of our students worldwide a better musical education. So, Tim, thanks again for having me on. We look forward to uh, releasing this episode and many other great episodes of the Guitar Top uh, Guitar Podcast. And we'll go from there. <laughs> Too many tops and guitars and whatever else. Uh, and I, yeah. I'll also uh, say the same for my podcast too. And I think the other thing that teachers can do, even if you don't know if you've got a particular story to tell, I'm sure you do, by the way, and Michael would be the person to bring it out. Even if you don't think so, you can uh, definitely contact Michael and his email is michael at topmusic.co in case uh, I think the audio cut out slightly then because I know one thing that you are incredibly skilled at, Michael, is coaching and you're really happy to help people. And so maybe even if you're interested in speaking to Michael and having it recorded and shared, a little bit of a coaching call or something like that, that would be great to share too. We love hearing from our members. Uh, we've got a number of Top Music Guitar members as well. If you'd like to be under a bit of a spotlight or in the hot seat for a little bit of coaching, that's a great thing to share too. And I know Michael's incredibly skilled at doing that. So uh, we'll wrap it up there. Thanks again, Michael, and uh, look forward to uh, listening to you soon. Thanks again, Tim. Well, even if you don't teach guitar, I do hope you enjoyed today's episodes and please do share this episode with others who you may know who are interested in guitar teaching. Maybe they're still teenagers but have been playing for a few years and perhaps interested in this as a career or want to learn some of the steps to taking on their first student. Whoever it is, 
please do share this episode with them or in fact, ask them to just search up the Top Music Guitar Podcast over on any of the podcast players iTunes, Apple, or Spotify. Next week on the podcast, I'm going to be sharing with you my actual presentation from Nicola Canton's Teacher Turbo Boost event. This was held back in April. And in this presentation, I share how playing with others really cemented the fun and enjoyment that I needed to play for life and how community and co-working really is crucial for students in building a lifelong passion for music. I know that's a topic close to all your hearts and I hope you agree with the kinds of things I will be saying. That's next week. It's about a 20-minute presentation. And if you weren't able to make the Teacher Turbo Boost, make sure you tune in next week for that. I'm Tim Topham, and you've been listening to The Topcast. I'll speak to you next week. For more information about this episode and to find out how to enhance your own teaching, visit topmusic.co. You'll find everything you need for your studio, from lesson plans to cheat sheets, quick win teaching ideas, and guides on how to build your teaching business. Plus, you'll be connected to a global community of the world's top music teachers. And when you're ready, join hundreds of other teachers around the world by becoming a Top Music Pro member and get access to all our bonus content and flagship courses. And don't forget to follow topmusic.co on social media and subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen to it. That's all for today. We'll see you in the studio.